alternate timelines. What if something changed in history? That sure would be crazy. If you're clicking on part 3 of this video, you already know the deal. I found this iceberg listing the various alternate timelines imagined in the alternate history genre throughout the genre's history. You know what this is, as do I, so let's finish this up with part 3. The Place Promised in Our Early Days The Place Promised in Our Early Days is a 2004 anime set in a world where the Soviet Union occupies half of Japan following World War II. Under the occupation, the Soviets built a tower in Hokkaido that apparently can harness the powers of parallel universes. The tower even has the power to shift universes around it, transforming the surrounding region into various multiverse possibilities. If it is bombed, war will occur with the Soviets, which militant fronts hope will lead to the reunification of Japan. Point of Existence 2 Point of Existence 2 is a mod for the game Battlefield 2, set in an alternate timeline where, you know what, I'm going to just read this verbatim. After a long, bloody war in the Sudan, the governments of the United States and Russia struck an uneasy ceasefire over the fate of Africa and its burgeoning industry. This peace would be short-lived, for to the north a new conflict was brewing, Ukraine. A former satellite state of the Soviet Union sought to gain back the power from which it once reveled in. As the snow fell in a heavy midwinter storm, Ukrainian troops moved towards the border of Belarus. Without warning, Ukrainian troops attacked with a speed and effectiveness not seen since the Blitzkrieg of World War II. With their aggressive tactics, the Ukrainian army reached the capital of Belarus in a matter of weeks. The lightly armed and ill-prepared Belarusian army could do little to stop this onslaught of men and metal. The fall of Minsk signaled the end of resistance throughout Belarus. The United Nations condemned these attacks as unjust and illegal, but was unable to pass a mandate to take action against the expansionist aims of Ukraine. Six months came to pass with no military action against Ukraine, but rumors had started that Ukraine was systematically killing their former political competitors. With no clear evidence of the assassinations, the United Nations was still reluctant to take action. As time passed, more evidence surfaced of executions, illegal imprisonment, and torture. In an underground bunker, military advisors and command staff from all around the world met to plan the attack. The principal military force to go into Ukraine would be led by Germany and the United States. They planned to hit Ukraine first in the hopes that if the Ukrainian public found out about the war crimes their government had committed in their name, the citizens would lay down their arms and greet the American and German troops as liberators. On a dim night in September, the invasion of Ukraine was started. Through the darkness came 10,000 airborne troops dropping from the sky like a heavy rainstorm. The destiny of Eastern Europe now lies in your hands. It is time for you to choose which side of this epic conflict you shall fight on to prove your point of existence. Eleven twenty two sixty three. 112263 is a novel by Stephen King about a time traveler who goes back in time to prevent JFK from being assassinated. I'm going to be honest. This, along with a few other entries, should be at the top of the iceberg. There are many levels that should kind of just be switched around. This novel got an adaptation on Hulu. It shouldn't be below Oga Shrugs. The plot of the novel is pretty much an example of what happens if you try to dabble in the past, and it leads to unintended consequences of the future. Twilight of the Red Czar Twilight of the Red Tsar is a scenario by the user Napoleon IV where Stalin survives the stroke that in our timeline killed him. Essentially, there is a massive pogrom against the Jews. Basically, due to Israel existing, the Soviets declare war on all Jews for some reason. Stalin goes on to purge even more people, starting a second great terror within the USSR. In fact, it's even more crazy this time around, as people just get purged for no reason at all. 90,000 are executed in the span of a few months. This leads to a more extreme Cold War, the Americans using nuclear weapons in Korea, and even expanding the war into Greater China, nuking several Chinese cities. Soviet and Chinese relations basically halt due to Stalin failing to come to Mao's aid, even leading to a war between the two. 
Pretty much Stalin becomes worse than Hitler. You get the idea by now. Things pretty much become laughably bad because Stalin lives a little bit longer and every historical figure acts out of character for the sake of a more eventful scenario. Green Antarctica Green Antarctica is a scenario from user Devaldron, detailing an imagined speculative world where Antarctica never was covered in ice and remained a habitable continent, leading to a whole separate world of various evolutions and eventually civilization. Since the land would share a similar history with South America and Australia, its megafauna would be closely related. It's home to giant rat-type birds, massive reptiles, and marsupial mammals. The land would be populated by opportunistic grasses and plants that shift from season to season. Humans would eventually come to the continent via Australia. The most reasonable assumption is that humans do eventually come to the continent and they're descended from Polynesians. The people who settle this land call it Tasalo. Tasalo becomes the noted namesake of this landmass instead of simply Antarctica. These people would scrounge for resources on such an unpredictable continent. It's even assumed they made hoard resources by copying local monkeys. When they can, they hunt megafauna marsupials. Due to the extreme nature of the continent, life is horrendous. In the scenario, cannibalism is an active part of daily life. Parents choose to eat their own children. In many ways, this scenario in its author imagines Antarctica as the most deplorable place imaginable. Some monkeys are domesticated and used as sex slaves. These hive monkeys somehow spread to the rest of the world and are more successful than raccoons. The people live in dark underground cities and pretty much enjoy being outright evil and sadistic. The longer this scenario goes on, the more these people evolve into what can only be described as the Dark Elves. There's a culture of necrophiles, one of drunkards, one of zoophiles, one of people who are just so evil the other evil people hate them. Torture is a normal activity in this world, and the Tasalal seem to have no human moral compass at all. As a race and ethnicity, they collectively enjoy murder, rape, and torture. Man, these things are starting to get pretty wacky, huh? A Golden Island to the West A Golden Island to the West is a scenario by user Crunch Buttsteak where the entire state of California gets mass transported backwards in time to the year 1850 the day that the state joined the Union. This was written in 2016, so what was imagined as a future 2018, the United States becomes so bad that California votes to leave the US, and on election night, after celebrating its victory, the whole state mysteriously goes backwards in time. Basically, Californians freak out that they're in the past and nothing outside of their state is developed, and Americans and natives from 1850 freak out because there's now a futuristic civilization on the west coast. Being made in 2016, the entire scenario is pretty much a jab at the newly elected Trump, as right-wingers in the scenario fail to create a state in North California, and it's believed that by this alternate 2018, the US would be on the brink of collapse. This California uses its technological advancement to defeat slavery, save the Native Americans, and take over North America becoming a new superpower. North American Confederacy Series The North American Confederacy Series is a series of novels by L. Neal Smith about a timeline where one word change in the Constitution fundamentally changes the U.S. In the preamble of the U.S. Declaration of Independence, the word unanimous is added, making the phrase governments derive their just power from the unanimous consent of the governed. Despite the Declaration of Independence having no legal authority in the future US, saying unanimous inspires this guy to aid the Whiskey Rebellion, which becomes a second American Revolution. The original US Constitution is thrown out and replaced with what can only be described as a libertarian dream. Thomas Jefferson frees the slaves in 1820. Because the government doesn't exist, Libertarianism progresses humanity far into the future. 1776 becomes the new Year Zero. Humans are able to invent electricity earlier and not only communicate with monkeys, but dolphins as well, leading to a civilization where apes and orcas are granted the full rights of citizens. Mastodons are brought back to life in 1999. Delenda Est 
Dolenda Est is a short story by Poole Anderson where due to a time-traveling interference, Hannibal is able to successfully destroy Rome, leading to a world where the Roman Empire never rises and Carthage remains. Celtic and Carthaginian culture become the new basis of Western civilization, leading to an advancement in technology actually greater than our own, including an earlier industrial revolution. For the most part, the world is divided between major empires. Lithuania becomes the new Russia of this world. India controls most of Southeast Asia and Australia. The Celts control North America. And Africa is simply divided into what's called African states. July's People July's People is a novel written by Nadine Gordimer, which imagines a future South Africa where apartheid is defeated by a brutal African revolution. The military wipes out most white resistance and the nation descends into civil war. The novel pretty much imagines the fallout that comes from this and follows a white family attempting to survive and realize the true extent of the apartheid. Crisis in the Kremlin Crisis in the Kremlin is a 1991 strategy game which places you, the player, in control of the USSR between the 1970s and a future 2017. Coincidentally, it was released at the same time that the Soviet Union fell and allows you to bring the Soviets down multiple different paths, the path of reforming, destroying the USSR, or cracking down on any reform at all. What fate this old superpower goes down is in your hands. And that's essentially all there is. No Spanish Civil War in 1936 No Spanish Civil War in 1936 is a parody alternate history scenario by the user Dr. Strangelove. In it, actual historical accuracy doesn't matter, and the scenario is more of a critique of the cliches within the alternate history genre at the time whenever bringing up the Spanish Civil War, such as Franco always winning. Instead, in this alternate timeline, the strangely unexpected occurs. To summarize the scenario, the major factions that we would imagine winning the war never really arise and brutally fail to take control. There is no 1936 coup by the militarists. The coup is seen as a laughable failure and nothing really happens. Spanish democracy largely remains and Spain stays a prominent state in the upcoming Second World War, even joining up with France in facing an invasion by the Axis powers. No W. No W is a scenario by the user Lost Freeway about a timeline where George W. Bush dies in a car accident on August 1st, 2000. This death is before he is ever confirmed as the Republican nominee for the 2000 election. The ramifications of this are, of course, severe. Many more than simply Bush never being able to oversee the war on terror. As in true alternate history fashion, this result leads to a lot of nukes being fired off. Moscow is leveled by a Chechen terrorist attack. This sends the entire nation into a civil war, while Pakistan and India also nuke each other off the map. Rick Santorum wins the presidency in 2008 and creates a right-wing dictator state, disappearing his political enemies, often orchestrating plane crashes to kill them. Every politician in this alternate world has no regard for self-preservation at all. Santorum is so extreme it leads to a breakdown of the political right. As he goes so fascist, he wipes out anyone that isn't himself. Voyage Voyage is a 1996 novel by Stephen Baxter about a timeline where JFK survives his assassination attempt, yet is so severely crippled he must step down from the presidency. As a result, this leads to a more ambitious President Nixon, who greenlights plans to send a man to Mars instead of the space shuttle. In this alternate 20th century, the space program of the US is much more ambitious. If you've heard of For All Mankind, it's very much in that same realm. The Forest of Time The Forest of Time is a novella by Michael Flynn where the United States breaks apart into squabbling states, much like in the disunited states of America. This leads to a greater cultural shift between the former allies. Pennsylvania, for instance, is a mainly German-speaking state having their own dialect. There is no such concept of the United States, as after the revolution, there's no longer a common culture or unity. In this alternate timeline, the states fought among one another, such as Pennsylvania and Connecticut fighting over the Wyoming Valley, a war known as the Pennamite Yankee War, for which neither was the victor. This animosity created a far more hostile environment in the post-independent US, 
which was exploited by their British neighbors. Tecumseh was able to create the native independent state he had wished to, while Pennsylvania pretty much fought wars with all of their neighbors, including New York. This timeline in general has less technological advancement. The Industrial Revolution never truly took off to such an extent, and even by the late 20th century, technology resembles that a hundred years earlier. Society as a whole is more disconnected and never sees the massive, global-spanning wars of our own timeline. It's almost as if time stood still since the end of the American Revolution, at least politically. A World of Laughter, A World of Tears a World of Laughter, A World of Tears is a timeline by the user Static Chaos where Walt Disney is elected president in the 1950s instead of Eisenhower. Oh boy. Disney is asked to run for the Republicans, and he, well, does what Disney does best. This results in a strange combination of vintage Disney Americana and anti-communism peak 1950s politics. The Mickey Mouse Club, for instance, becomes a political propaganda wing of the U.S. government. They even wear armbands. Disney's ideology warps the nostalgic elements of his studio into a fascist and anti-Semitic political group. While Disney himself is manipulated by stronger politicians, his election opens the floodgates towards an America going for a far more racist and conservative future. George A. George A is a French comic series about various alternate history settings. Each comic takes place in a new timeline. As an example, there's one where Apollo ends in failure and the Russians end up on the moon first. A failed D-Day invasion results in the Soviets pushing so far west they eventually reach Paris before the Western powers. A successful Schlieffen plan in 1914 forces the French to capitulate to the German Empire. After a nuclear war, everyone fights over the remains of Texas. Da Vinci successfully implements those death machines he had planned for some time, and it changes warfare in the Mediterranean forever. And an Islamic Christopher Columbus discovers America first. Fault Line 49 Fault Line 49 is a novel by Joe McKinnon, set in a timeline where Canada is under the military occupation of the United States. After a terrorist attack in Canada, and refusal by the Americans to extradite the terrorists responsible, a war breaks out between the US and Canada. One that results in Canada being occupied, and the story details how the common civilian lives in this new reality. The point of the novel is more to relate how much occupation can transform a nation for people who had nothing to do with the reason for the invasion, alluding to Iraq and Afghanistan. From the Fatherland with Love From the Fatherland with Love is a novel by Ryu Murakami, where North Korea invades and occupies Japan. Homegrown resistance turned terrorists are the only forces that can successfully fight back against the occupiers. A Tenetet I Pascho Skog A Tenetet I Pascho Skog is a novel by Hans Alfredsen, set in a world where after an attack by Swedish communists results in the death of hundreds of German soldiers and Eva Braun, Adolf Hitler invades Sweden in retaliation. Sweden, which was neutral and wrote out the war in our own timeline, now finds itself in the middle of World War II. Characters such as the real-life founder of IKEA collaborate with the German SS, and the country falls into a civil war that goes on to aid the Allies. The war ends a year earlier than in our own timeline, due to German resources being more stretched thin. It Happened Here It Happened Here is a film by Kevin Brownlow and Andrew Mullo, set in a world where Britain lost World War II and was occupied by the Germans. After the catastrophe at Dunkirk, Britain basically fails to hold its own against the Nazis. The island was handed over to the British Union of Fascists, and much like any World War II occupation story, it revolves around resistance against the Nazis and their local collaborators. The Bush Soldiers The Bush Soldiers is a novel by John Hooker where, in much of the same way as the previous entry, this is also set in an alternate post-World War II, where Australia has fallen to the Japanese. The populated coastlines of the West are occupied by Japan, while most resistance has been pushed into, well, the bush. With the rest of the continent at their disposal, the Aussie resistance uses the bush to their advantage in a new war to push the occupiers back into the sea. Resistance fighters strike against zinc mines and battle over resources against the invaders. MacArthur and the Americans largely have left the Aussies to their own fate. A Scotsman in Egypt a Scotsman in Egypt is a narrative role-playing thread by Something Awful Forum user Jerusalem, 
using the game Medieval 2 Total War. Set in the year 1080, it follows two Scottish nobles that now find themselves in the Middle East, now setting off to gain glory in this foreign land. The story came as an idea to take a bunch of Scottish soldiers and sail them randomly to Egypt to see what might come from it. The entire story is told with dialogue and characters despite it being based on a strategy game. It's quite the read. If Lee had not won at the Battle of Gettysburg. If Lee had won at the Battle of Gettysburg is a counterfactual that was written by Winston Churchill as a part of a collection of short stories called If It Had Happened Otherwise. That's right, Winston Churchill himself wrote an alternate history scenario. He writes the essay from the perspective of somebody in an alternate world where Lee actually did win the battle. This fictional alternate author speculates what might have occurred if the Union had won the battle. So this essay is from the perspective of somebody who doesn't know our timeline imagining it. And for the most part, the essay is pretty much saying what happened in our own history, but from the perspective of the author Churchill. In this timeline, apparently after winning Gettysburg, Lee abolishes slavery, and the British use that opportunity to join the Southern cause, which is quite the assumption, Churchill. The North is forced to surrender in New Orleans, and even is threatened with an invasion by Canada. With Lee abolishing slavery, everyone just comes together for the Southern cause. Apparently, the US and South sign a treaty, the Union loses, but slavery ends anyway. Churchill even mentions how John Brown would be glad. Peace comes for the next few decades, Woodrow Wilson becomes President of the South, and for the most part, funnily enough, this scenario plays out a lot like many other Southern Victory series we've seen. It's just in this case, it's written by Churchill. World War. War of Equals. World War War of Equals is a fan fiction of the World War series written by Harry Turtledove, written by the user Dragon. In this fanfiction, the race invades Earth in the 21st century instead of during World War II. Think of it like in many ways if Battle LA actually happened with the aliens invading in 2010. For the most part, humanity puts up an even better fight than they did in World War II, with individual post-colonial nations now joining the war such as Palestine. They capture Iran, Iraq, and for the most part Ukraine. Due to humanity having the technology to know the race was coming, they actually prepare for two years before the initial invasion begins. Humans have the technology that can now stand toe to toe with the race. Overall, if you have read World War, you know how the story ends. Tarant Loblanche. Tarant Loblanche is a novel written by a Valencian knight, Jonal Martorell. The story revolves around a knight asked by the Byzantine Emperor to help save the Empire from the invading Turks. He takes up the call, along with other knights in Europe, and successfully beats back the Ottomans, preventing the Byzantines from ever falling and saving Constantinople. If you are familiar with history, then you will know that this was written only four decades after the fall of Constantinople. This story is in many ways the first example of alternate history wishful thinking a true what-if to what was a crushing blow to Christendom. It's likely this book went on to influence elements of Don Quixote. Aprils in Abaddon Aprils in Abaddon is a series by Reddit user Jellyfish De Novo set in a timeline where the US collapses into a civil war, much like Syria. After Texas declares independence due to the election of Eric Holder, the nation falls apart. I don't want to go too much into detail on this one because, well, YouTube, and politics. However, the Caribbean becomes home to a new age of piracy. Various far-left and far-right factions control the respected areas you would imagine, and anything your imagination of what a second American Civil War may look like shows up at some point. Alaska and Hawaii declare independence, and Protestant and Catholic extremists fight one another. Alternate Presidents Alternate Presidents is an anthology book edited by Mike Resnick about pretty much alternate presidents, and how their presidency might go. Each story is written by a different author and has a different take on whatever wacky executives get elected. As examples, Ben Franklin runs and beats George Washington to become the first president. Davy Crockett beats Andrew Jackson, and his administration sees the U.S. erupt into civil war by 1850, for which the Union loses. Victoria Woodhull wins the presidency in 1872, becoming the first woman president. 
Her vice president is Frederick Douglass. Walter Mondale wins the presidency, causing Mexico to erupt into civil war in the 1980s. I think you get the idea. USA 2002 and 1942. USA 2002 in 1942 is a GURPS campaign written by Dave Knudsen. If you're familiar with the premise, you can guess what this is about. The United States in 2002 mysteriously is transported back in time to 1942. The results of this is that the US must now realign itself with the realities of living in a World War II world, along with the politics of dealing with fascism, communism, and European imperialism. George W. Bush's post-9-11 America basically finds itself having to fight the Nazis again. So imagine him with Churchill and Stalin, trying to outsmart Hitler. It's a pretty fascinating and funny thing to think about. A next result, a 60s timeline. A next result, a 60s timeline, is a timeline by user Intergalactic, taking place in a world where Nixon wins the election of 1960. Or does he? Nixon actually wins the election, but due to electoral college shenanigans, the election is instead given to Kennedy, who won in our timeline, but wins through far more messier means in this alternate one. Because of this, LBJ doesn't become JFK's vice president. John McCormack does instead. So when Kennedy is assassinated, McCormack becomes the next president, which results in a federal government that is much more violent against Klan activities. The early 60s become racked by violence between federal troops and KKK militias. As a result, this only emboldens Southern Dixiecrats, and George Wallace ends up winning the election of 1964. The scenario ends with the US entering a new and uncertain time. After the end mod. After the End is a mod for Crusader Kings 2 set in a post-apocalyptic America in the year 2666 AD. In it, North America has devolved into a series of small states, tribes, and factions. The cause of the apocalypse is never known, simply referred to as the event, one that occurred sometime in the 21st century. Religion is the driving factor of this world. Even what we might not call religion today takes on a religious element in the apocalypse. We have the standard faiths, Mormons, Catholics, Evangelicals, Anglicans, Norse, and even Neonasus. There are those that worship Celtic gods and even Sol Invicta. But time has also warped ideology to create new religions, most particularly from old Americana and politics. There are Hamiltonians, Jeffersonians, and Libertarians that worship the imagery of the founders. Consumerists believe Americans didn't consume enough, and therefore that is why the collapse occurred in the first place. Atomicists worship nuclear weapons, as any good cult in the apocalypse would do. Russ cultists worship old machinery, brotherhood style. And there's even some Shinto, because why not? The Atlantropa Articles The Atlantropa Articles is a novel by Cody Franklin set in an alternate far future where Nazi Germany became the sole empire in Europe and fundamentally reshaped the culture of the continent. After thousands of years, the old regime has been lost to myth and legend. Fascism simply becomes the only ideology that was imagined to exist. The Nazis dammed up the Mediterranean, drying up the sea in part to allow for more farmland. However, after being left to its own devices for millennia, the sea has largely dried up. No urge has ever been made to destroy the dam as old Nazi construction and idols have taken on a holy status. Arianism is as prevalent as Christianity in the medieval world. The Mediterranean has been lost, now replaced with a desert region simply called the Kiln, as the basin has become an inhospitable world, populated by only metal ships on tracks that sail across the barren sea. Ab Urbe Condita Libri Ab Urbe Condita Libri is a series of Roman historical accounts by the historian Levi, pondering the question if Alexander the Great had survived and went on to invade Western Europe as he had originally planned. And in true alternate history fashion, his side, the Romans, just win. The Romans defeat Alexander anyway, despite being a minor city. It's great to know that even in its very origins, some aspects of counterfactual and alternate history have just never changed. Thank you all for supporting this iceberg. I never expected this was going to be three parts, but I probably should have. This started as an April Fool's joke because I didn't know how the community would react to me uploading an iceberg. Well, joke's on me, this took me a whole month. Joke's on me. <laughs>
Describing each timeline, even vaguely, takes up so much time, and if you have stuck around until now, then you're a true fan of this genre. Once again, thanks to Trey the Explainer for giving me this idea, thanks to Emperor Fanta for making this iceberg in the first place, and thanks to everybody who has made iceberg videos before me. This is just such a fun format for me, and even after doing two hours of this type of video, I kind of still want to just make more, but regular content will be next. Once again, thank you all for watching. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.